the good old glasses, so. Which need to be cleaned. <laughs> so it's fine. I don't think it's all creep everywhere. Yeah. Hey everyone, hi Dimo. Hey Dimitri. It's good to be back. Um, so in today's video, we came in to talk about the coral coloration. So I've been on this quest to talk to many different people and experts, such as yourself, uh, about what it takes to bring uh, out the color out of uh, the coral, get it to you know the A or A plus level. And in today's video, I wanna ask you questions uh, about your experience uh, and cover not only Acropora, but also things like Euphelia and a whole bunch of other uh, corals. Right. So what do you think? Let's dive right in. Let's dive right in. Let's start with Acros because uh, these are the ones that uh, I think everybody wants to uh, see first. Yes. And uh, you posted on your Facebook uh, a really cool photo that I think caught my eye. You showed the uh, Disney, Walt Disney. Yes, so if you guys remember the last video we did about Acros, yeah. I had brought my Walt Disney out from my T5 grout back to LED because I was not happy with the color. Yep. Uh, growth I wasn't too concerned about, but it wasn't really growing. But it's been just about two months now. And is this the is, guy? Yeah, it is looking like a different coral. But I want to say it has completely doubled as far as growth and the yes. color is I'm going to say 90% of the way, the way back to what it was before. So I'm like, I think this is as good as Walt Disney gets, right? Yeah. There's pictures online you look at, they look completely fake in Photoshop and that's the colors we're getting out of it. Like I'm seeing uh, purple, uh, orange, green, yellow, the blue tips, um, blue tips. Uh, it's every single color kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so um, we remember, I think the video we shot was maybe two months ago, mm -hmm. uh, give or take. And this, we went from what it was before to what it is now. So um, what, what gives? Um, as far as what's changed, um, honestly, not really much. I, I've been doing the same things as far as the aminos, supplements, the foods I feed, they all stay the same. Um, you know, I've been doing my... I really focus on the trace elements always, but nothing's been out of fluctuation. Nothing's changed drastically. The biggest thing is the lighting, and a lot of people have said T5s are really the best for for SPS, but proof is in the pudding. I, I don't think so. I beg to differ. This is uh, pretty stellar. So uh, before that, though, um, where did you have this uh, under, and like what has changed from that perspective? Like much stronger light? Uh, um, well, there was a about a two-week period where it was in much lower light just because I had gotten some uh, rainbow Ghani colonies that I wanted right. to keep in low light. So that could definitely contribute to it losing some color, but I wouldn't say to the point of where it was. So it definitely got in, in less light, but I think just the type of light, like T5 is definitely different. I've seen two of the same corals look completely different under T5 and LED. And if we talk uh, timing, so how long in your experience um, it takes for a coral to lose the color and how long does it take for it to nurse it back to you know the optimal color. It, it really depends on what caused the problem. Yeah. Um, I've had many acros lose color within about a week, whether mm -hmm. it's from low light or something spiked. Um, and I've been able to get color back within a few weeks. Definitely from low light, it's been, it, it, I find it takes a couple weeks, um, but if there's something more drastic, I've seen months, months and months and months. So if you have a coral that you, so if there is, if you take a coral that's great uh, coloration and then um, you bring it under low light where it expects high light, what would you expect it to look like? It's just gonna darken up? Yeah, I would definitely expect it to darken up, especially if it's a fluorescent coral. Like I, I, would, I would expect that pop to be gone within mm -hmm. the, the first probably four or five days. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, just really darken if you keep it in much lower light. Got it. And um, at what point do you see that the coral, for example, lights up? Oh, sorry, lightens up. So it goes not bleached, but, you know, like pale uh, almost? I'd say about the same, about a week. 
and it really depends on how high of a light. If you go too high, you'll just kill the coral, which will right. see bleaching and, and tissue necrosis. But um, I, I'd say about a week, a week to two weeks, as long as you're not going too crazy with the amount of light you're giving it. So in, in this case, um, observing a coral and seeing uh, whether it's kind of going shades lighter or darker is a good um, test to kind of know how to adjust it and how to find the right space for of it. Of course, and I have a few acros here Yeah. in this corner. They're in a much, much lower light corner. Yeah. Um, I thought, you know, maybe I could bring some nicer colors out by blasting Ooh. them with light. Yeah, this is a perfect example. And it didn't work out too well. I had them in probably six or 700 par for two months and it just, they weren't getting more colorful. And then out of nowhere, within a week, they started getting very pale. Uh, so I moved them right to that corner and it's been four days now and they're starting to get some color back. So right. that's a perfect example of it's gone a little too far and it's definitely savable, but we've stressed the coral out. So for anybody who hasn't seen our previous video, this is the coral flat. This is a, uh, what is a six footer? Six by 30 by uh, 16 tall. And you've got one, two, three, four, five radians. Yes. Uh, running at 100%? Uh, pretty much all the all the blues, uh, UVs, violets are at 100. Red and green are very low at around 68 percent. And then I normally run zero whites throughout the day. I have cyans up at 75, which really lightens the tank. Uh -huh. It does give it that T5 look. Um, I don't really keep white on this tank. I do on my display, but not not on the not on the flat here. So you're not a big believer in um, upping the whites for uh, you know some extra pigmentation that the corals can get? Um, it, I do that in the display, yeah. but I find in here they're already getting too much light. If I give them more white light, we're going to be getting into the eight or nine hundred bar range, which I think is too much oh for God. a lot of these acros. So um, has your uh, schedule, lighting schedule, changed since uh, we did the last video? Nope, it's been the same. I want to say for the last year. Okay, so folks, you can go back and we've done a whole video with Demo about his uh, lighting for both this acro system as well as the LPS uh, systems uh, in the back. And you can download all of those schedules um, as well as you can ask uh, questions. Now, uh, how long is the light schedule, uh, like the light period? Uh, uh, so we ramp up for half an hour at 11.30 before uh -huh. we open and then it's full blast from 12 to 8 and so then 30 eight minutes, hours yeah, eight hours of solid light and then 30 minutes ramp down so not ideal what you would have in most aquariums but we're a store so it's you kind of have to show the corals off from when you open to when you close and when you say not ideal is it uh when it starts when it ends or the duration as well um more like the ramp up like generally you only want three or four hours of like super intense light mm -hmm. but we give them eight hours of it here um, and I, I see some corals handle it very well, as you can see, and some yes. not so much. Um, it's hard to find that balance. In the display tank, we've definitely given it more of a few hours, gradual increase, and then gradual decrease. Oh, it's interesting. So, you know, I met some people that come from that T5 or metal halide background where they're a big believer in, let's just turn something on and run for eight or 10 hours and then turn it back off and it's flat. Yeah, but you uh, subscribe to a little bit more of a natural, uh, gradual uh, yeah, process. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really only would I would say that if you're going to go to the intense light that we're really giving these corals, I, I don't think you could give them six or seven hundred par under T5 or halide. Maybe halide, but I had I used to have a T5 fixture on this tank when I opened up, and uh, it just wasn't giving me the par I wanted. It wasn't giving me the spread I wanted. It was a eight bulb with reef bright, yep. um, ATI sun power. So it is a good light but it just wasn't doing it. So I can see less less par, yes, you can give them that intense light for a longer time period, but mm -hmm. I don't think it, it's the smartest choice if you're just gonna just blast them with super intense light all day long. Okay, well, um, maybe I'll uh, ask you for a copy of those two schedules once again. Uh, and I know I've done it probably 17 times already. Yeah, it's okay. So, excellent. Um, so coming back to uh, Acros, uh, I. I'm just stunned by this guy here. Like, uh, who is this uh, again? The orange and... That is our pot of gold tenuous. It's probably five times better than the last time when we yeah. watched, looked at it. Yeah, and all the those cuts that we've cut, they've already grown to half an inch. Yes. Doing very well. I said I was gonna not cut it again, but I cut it a couple more times as I always do, but it, it definitely is turning a corner, which is good. It's growing back. Pot and of gold. Color color is just great it's so much better than in the last video mm -hmm. and, and and again it's um, 
probably one of the best looking corals I think I've ever seen. And we do that all the time. We overcut a coral, we piss it off. It starts to fade a little bit. It's, mm -hmm. it's growth gets stunted. So it, it's also important to try and make things sustainable too, because once that beast is gone, I no longer have it, right? Um, and for acros, um, do you feed anything? Um, I, I feed all the systems generally the same thing. Um, I do aminos every day, which I don't really consider a food, yep. but I'll do min S as my general coral food. And yep. then depending on what I have in the system at the time, I'll do a uh, coral sprint mm -hmm. or pellets if we have lots of large meaty corals. Um, and that, that's really it. If my, if my nitrates and phosphates are a little bit lower, I'll feed heavier. But I've tried to keep it simple, very simple. And your phosphates are? What? Um, they're starting to come back down again now. We're at about 0 0.08. Okay. Uh, they did spike, I want to say three months ago to yep. 0 0.18. Yep, and I've really, really brought them down slowly. I don't want to, I don't want to shock anything. And our nitrates are hovering around three still, which is better than zero. Okay, so we've covered uh, nutrition. We've covered uh, most of the you know basic parameters. What's your alkalinity at? Eight point five. Eight point five. That's nice. Uh, and so for acros, do you find that it um, is different? Um, to color up, let's say, tenues versus uh, kind of a more regular acro or even the deep water acro? Like, do you do things differently? No. Um, I mean, obviously, if it's a deeper water acro, I'm not going to give it as much light right away. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to play around with the positioning of corals, like one week at a time, see how they react, because there is certain areas that have a little more light than others. But the care, the care is generally the same. Stable parameters. A huge, huge thing is trace elements that a lot of people overlook. I think as long as you have solid light, solid flow, mm -hmm. you can keep your trace in line, you'll have nothing but success. So I uh, listened to uh, an interview with Jason Fox on Reef Bum, where um, Jason is a big believer in just huge water changes. And he's thinking that I think some trace elements can be replenished with that. You think... Um, you, uh, what's your opinion on that? I think it's the exact same end goal, just a different approach mm -hmm. from what I have. Um, you know, water changes are, are being done to balance things, right? A lot yep. of people think it's for, you know, nutrient export, but if you don't have a problem with nutrients, why should we do water changes? Exactly. To balance things, to get, to get rid of any pollutants, contaminants, uh, you know, high elements, try and raise low ones, but it really only works with massive water changes like he does. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if, if your elements are half of what they should be, you need to do 100% water change to bring them back up. Um, so, you know, I just do more supplementing with, with the elements um, versus water changes because for me, it's not practical yep. to do a 500 gallon water change every single week. And I think that's a little bit more um, less stable compared yep. to just breaking up the elements and dosing them regularly. But at the end of the day, it's the same. I think it's the same goal we're both trying to achieve is the balance in all the elements. And uh, you see a lot of uh, people that come to your store and you see their aquariums and you visited some of the aquariums. So when it comes to acros especially, uh, what kind of advice would you, do you usually give them or things to check, especially if somebody's not getting there, like they, maybe their coral is at 70% but they want to get to these type of col uh, so colors. Most people come in and they'll tell me, like even a very experienced reefers will say, oh, how do you get these colors? Like, what do you do? What do you feed? They ask me all the basic questions. Yep. And I tell them the same thing every time. It's nothing special. I tell them the salt I use. I tell them the foods I use. And they're like, oh, well, I do the same things and it's not working. But it's not, it's not like a recipe where you just do it and it's going to work. There's other things involved. The environment's a little different. Um, but the biggest thing that I see that most people just don't really do mm -hmm. the way I do it is focus on those trace elements. I do regular ICP tests yep. and I don't go crazy and adjust every individual element every single time, but I adjust my overall practice to better suit the tank's needs, whether it's with my color elements, adding more of one bottle than the other, or in my balling uh, dosing, yes, adding more trace uh, to my calcium or to my alkalinity to mm -hmm. match my system's needs. Um, so it's more dynamic. Of uh, course. It, it's... It's what people really need to do. And, and it, I think it's 10 times harder for me to achieve that than it would someone in their home aquarium because I sell coral all the time. Yes. I bring coral in all the time. At home, nothing should be changing other than a few times, yes. you know, bring coral here and there. Um, so you should be able to really 
I want to say customize, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your dosing to your tank's needs. And that's why I love the balling method, because you can adjust your elements. Very but it's right. trace. Big believer in the trace elements. I think that's the one thing that makes the difference. Very true. Um, and I know Fauna has a, a whole selection of trace elements, whether you are doing Kalkwasser, whether you're doing a bowling, and um, oh, everything in between. They've got something for everyone. They're my preferred brand just because I trust them and I love the quality, but many yeah. other brands have the same idea out there. Might be a slightly different approach, um, but you know, when you see these beautiful tanks online, this guy's like using, oh, I use Aquaforest. People jump on the bandwagon and switch to all the products, not realizing it's not just about the products he uses, it's yep. his, his routine, it's maintenance. It's the practice overall. So I think Trace is going to be a huge game changer if people really start to focus on it. What about polyp extension? Like we, we see some really nice polyp extension here. What's um, your trick or trace elements? Trace elements as well. You Once think that's... everything started to become yeah. balanced, I noticed polyps on every acro that I've never seen before. Wow. So I used to think some acros just didn't really extend. Oh my God. I used to think some acros yeah. don't have polyps. Yeah. Um, and this was about a year ago. And then I really got a heavy into the, to the balancing the trace elements. Mm -hmm. And I look, I'm like, oh my goodness. These corals actually have polyps. They might not ex extend like a milli or yeah. or some other very hairy acros, but they have polyps. And you can see everything you see here has polyp extension. Whether it's small, it yep. still has it. But it's they're all open, and the flow is not even on right now. It's been off for probably about an hour. Yeah, so it's another thing because you're a store. Most of the time when I walk in, there's like no flow in this uh, coral bed. So it, it will be sometimes an hour or two with zero flow, and yet. Uh, the proof is in the pudding, as you said. Yeah, as long as we give them the flow regularly that they yeah. need it. I shut it off for the customers to view, but... And again, a reminder to anybody who's tuning in uh, and seeing all this uh, first video, we have done a video with a demo solely on flow, solely on nutrition, solely on uh, lighting. So right now we're just kind of summing uh, things up. Now, I promised to talk about other corals as well. So the torches for example um a lot of times when i talk to you you say hey i got this coral this torch and it was just not looking its best and then look at it two weeks later and it's just glowing so uh what gives um, um they're definitely a lot less needy mm -hmm. as far as like making sure everything's perfect but i find the biggest player in all euphilia is going to be just stable water, um, they're very susceptible to bacterial infections, so you, you want to be very yes. careful with your practice regarding that. Everyone's got their own little method, but I normally play around with lighting when it comes to euphilia. I have two sections. Mm -hmm. I have this table here where they're getting so much light that, in theory, they should be dead. Yes. But I've never seen brighter, nicer looking torches. And then my general table is around what most people keep them in. Um, and they look good, but when, when you look at these guys, they're just on another level. Uh, now, this is for torches, but what, what would happen if I were to put, let's say, a hammer in here, which is like a gold hammer? I've done it. Um, they don't always bleach, but they change color and they don't look good most of the time. They just don't do well with this kind of lighting. And define don't look good. Like, are they getting pale? Or? Sometimes they get pale and bleach. Sometimes they honestly, it's weird, they kind of brown out. Really? Yeah. I had a, a very nice branching rainbow hammer. I, I thought maybe if I can put it in this tank, yeah. I'll get some crazy color out of it. Yeah. Complete opposite. It was pissed off. It started to turn almost gray. It was very weird. Um, there's certain corals that I, I think just they just do not want more light. And for example, this uh, hammer here, it's off to the side, so it's not getting the same type of par. It, it's torches. still getting a lot. Yeah. Um, I just tested that recently. It's still getting around four to 500 par. Yeah. That is the one hammer that I couldn't color up fully under medium light, so I put it in here and it started to get that marbled look, which is a little bit nicer, I think. It is. Yeah. It, so in this particular case, uh, brighter color is, you're able to push it a little For bit For this further. one branching hammer, yeah. I think that's the only case where it worked, but yeah, it did. So you're like a mad scientist with uh, multiple labs and you can you know move things around and something well, doesn't work in one place, you put it into another. Yeah, I definitely want to see if, if what everyone says is the norm or has to be is, is not always the case and definitely okay. is not always the case. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, flat here. So this is your euphilia, and again, I think your par is half. Yeah, off. I want to say about half, if not less. Um, so the lighting is a little different on here. Yep. There's more cyans. It looks a little bit more on the green side. Looks um, pretty good. So, yeah. But the corals definitely do well. Um, the right side, which is your left side now, mm -hmm. has about 
a third of the par. So it's only one extra 15 on this side, so I'll keep it for Zoas or some corals that need a little bit more recovering. Yep. Um, but same approach, you know, they, they all generally need the same thing. And uh, whenever they come in, I'll definitely give them a lot less light and then slowly bring it up. Mm -hmm. I have some corals, you can see some alveoporos, they bleached like crazy for some reason after I cut them. And uh, they were not happy, so I had to put them in very low light. Now they're starting to recover. So I'm, I'm noticing a pattern here. So whenever you see somebody is not doing super great, you will back off and give them less light, maybe less flow? Immediately. So. Um, I try to put them in the least amount of stress environment as possible. Yeah. So I do know I give a lot of these corals more light than normal, Yeah. which is why that's the first thing I do. I take them out of the high light environment, mm -hmm. um, which also sometimes happens to be the lower flow environment too, and just give them a chance to come back. That's phenomenal. Um, and uh, what about um, uh, like flower pots, so basically ganis and whatnot, do they change their color, you find? Absolutely. So really? all the rainbow ganis you're looking at now, they were yeah. in my grow out in my T5 section. Yep. Yeah. They looked okay. Uh, you could definitely tell there's some of the colonies had greens and yellows and pinks, um, but they weren't popping. And then I brought them out about three or four weeks ago into the LEDs and they look, they just look so much better. Mm. And they look more extended too. Um, the water's the same back there, it's just really the lighting. The par is roughly the same. The flow is roughly the same. Yes. Um, they just look a lot happier and better out here. That is uh, pretty neat. Now, any other corals here that you would say change uh, their color, um, that you can kind of say are coloring up and whatnot? I would say acans for sure. I don't have many, but there yeah. are some in the middle. Um, yes. I find with acans, most of them will look better in less light. Really? Yeah, most of them for sure. There's only one out of the 12 or so that are there that you could tell stands out from the rest. Yes, the red one. That specific one got brighter in higher light. The mm -hmm. rest kind of went more dull. Yes. And it, it's, I, from what I've read, it's pretty known that acans do color up better in lower light. They'll, they'll, they'll present their, let's say, final color in lower light. They'll, they'll be nicer looking. So you could take a few of them and just move it maybe off yep. to the side and, and mm -hmm. see what it takes. And, and again, uh, the time frame, when would you start expecting to see some sort of a change? I find it's a little slower with LPS. Mm -hmm. um, I did have them in super low light, which was way too little. Yep. And so I moved them into higher light. It took about four weeks before I noticed some significant changes. Mm -hmm. But it, it may, may vary for everybody. It might be different. There might be something with my water that's causing them to color in a different speed. Interesting. And uh, so for the torches, um, they can handle kind of both, but for gold hammers, for example, um, what kind of par would you recommend? Um, for most of the, like frog spawns, yeah. hammers, octos, I, I would give them around 200 or less. 200 uh, And 200 is like what I would call giving them highlight. So realistically between 1 and 150, mm -hmm. um, I find they look great. Obviously if you put them in highlight after their color, they look much brighter, any coral does, but long term they don't do too well in it. Yes. I've moved all my um, frog spawns and hammers into this smaller right. tank, which Let's take a look. has a little bit less light. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit more spread out, but they look, I think, a lot better in there. Yes. That looks pretty, pretty awesome. I found their color got a lot more deep, more vibrant. Under a lower light? A little bit lower light, yeah. So what, about 100 uh, to 150? This far? is getting around 150. Okay. Tank. Very, it's at very low. And then uh, what about the uh, light spectrum? Is it the same idea? Like you would try to double down on the blue a yeah, little it's, bit it, more? It's roughly, okay. it's roughly the same spectrum. It's a little bit more blue in this tank, less cyan, yep. uh, which is that kind of tealish color. Yeah. Um, but overall, same, same idea. And again, so for LPS, you wouldn't say that you need to have like those two hours of white, for example. No, like, I, I did that in the display and I noticed no difference in the LPS. Uh, right. The SPS is where I saw that crazy growth increase when I just spiked the light. But the growth, but not color? No, no difference in color that I've seen. Interesting. So, okay, well, it actually kind of makes sense. Okay, now we have moved on to the third coral flat and... What about the trackies? Or you're not supposed to call them that. This is well. So some of them are trackies. Also, so all brain corals, whatever you want to say. Yeah. So um, what about them? Like I know they will change color, right? Uh, oh, especially yeah. if you blast them with light, uh, they're gonna go white. Yeah, they're very sensitive to light. Um, when they come in, 
the entire tank full of like 60 or 70 of them that I have is like super pale. Yeah. We might have two or three of them that look like nice, but you know, you'll see the potential and whatnot, but they're hypersensitive to light at that initial stage. Mm -hmm. um, I give them as little light as possible for at least a week. Yep. And then I'll slowly ramp it up. Um, I find no matter what spectrum you put them in, they don't really change once, you know, this is like, these are going to be this color. They've been here for a while now. Yep. They won't change too much. Um, well, they, to their maximum already. Yeah. yeah. They'll just get slightly brighter if you yeah. put them in higher light. If you go a little too far, they will bleach real quick. Mm -hmm. And then it's to the point of you probably won't be able to get them back. Um, but there's there's not too much to them. Some people say they're hard to keep. I find they're very easy. You know, they're, they're sensitive in the sense that if their tissue is damaged, they might not do so well. They might start to recede from that area. But their overall care is very simple. Interesting. Uh, my number one most favorite video on my YouTube channel is um, a video when I just got into the hobby where my trackie was eating a blue damselfish. Yeah, I saw that one just recently so too, actually. It's, it was insane. Just the fish got close, it stung it, and then uh, it was eating it. It was crazy. Speak, speaking of, I think Mr. Canthophilia is eating a snail. Oh, look at that. He, he was open, like wide open, about an hour ago, and now there's a snail in his mouth, and he's all shriveled up because he's eating them. Well, there you go. So maybe this will uh, be the second <laughs> uh, most popular video. Uh, and then we've got like zoas, for example. Anything uh, on zoas? Um, I grow them all in my T5 just because it's the tank I have back there. Yeah. And when I bring them out here, I don't notice a difference other than like they just fluoresce more under LED. Yeah. Um, I mean, I. It's hard to say whether they're growing faster or not because they're big colonies in the mm -hmm. back versus here it's all on plugs. They grow fast regardless, it, almost to the point where they're they're a pain. But and I, I want to point out you've got some uh, Montes right next to it. So, mm -hmm. uh, for example, this Sunset Monty, I find that um, it can handle easily a 400 or even 500 par and to be totally fine in my tank, for example. Mm -hmm. But you've got perfect coloration and kind of low light, so. So there's a funny story with these. I had them in T5s yeah. and it was the nicest looking Sunset Monty I've yes. ever seen in my life. Yes. It was like almost bubblegum pink. Yes. It was very weird. Um, so then I'm like, okay, it's time to cut this colony up. It looks great. I cut it up. I put it in here, which is in much lower light and every single piece bleached for some reason. And under then, low light. Under low light. Wow. You could still see one still recovering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then now they finally started to color back up and it's been close to four months. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes this stuff just happens. It's really weird. I don't know if it's the spectrum change that, that pissed them off. Um, the water is pretty much the same. I do have hammers that are stinging some of them. There's just not a lot of space in this tank right yeah. now. So that's understandable. But the color on the other end of that one is still nice. Yes, even this is pretty low light. And then still you've got some nice gold uh, hammers. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's pretty neat. And anything um so for example the roger rampage um mm -hmm. what, what kind of lighting does it need and uh, i grow i grow it in significantly higher light than it is now mm -hmm. um, i find the color stays the same yeah but the growth is near stagnant in low light i in see my experience they, and this is a chalice good. right so yeah. supposed to be low light uh mm -hmm. in generally so my roger rampage barely grows yep. in low light yep stays the same color my scrambled eggs grows like crazy in low light and has very nice color it's very weird. Interesting. So um, I guess, again, the kind of pattern here is uh, you have to watch your corals and uh, maybe make some smaller adjustments and see how they react in a week to three weeks uh, range. Absolutely. OK, well, uh, we did talk a lot about the uh, kind of frags and, and, uh, and coral flat systems, but you also do have a beautiful display over here. Yes, which right now is at the peak light, super, super bright. Uh, it's very white right now. So maybe I'll turn off the uh, orange filter so you uh, you folks can actually see it um, on, with kind of more white uh, color. Oh yeah, that looks uh, phenomenal. I think it's so nice to see um, a tank not only just under blue, but also the kind of true colors, mm -hmm. as Cindy Lauper would say. Um, so lots of macros and again uh, you've got on, not that much light here right it's not a crazy 600 <laughs> no, bar no, yeah, yeah it's around there <laughs> really it's actually it's it 
you didn't used to be when we did our original part test on this tank. I think with with your video, yeah, I didn't have that extra thirty in the middle. So we were sitting around oh like two fifty to three fifty yes. par, which is what people say ideal is. Yeah, um, yes. I also wasn't doing white light then. Oh. Now I added an extra thirty, which in theory doubled the light. Uh, yeah, it's a G four, so I want to say about forty percent more light. Yeah, and then I cranked the whites to a hundred for two hours a day. So right now, if I had to guess, we're probably getting six to seven hundred par just for oh, these God. two hours. Uh, we'll confirm with a later video, maybe. Yeah. Um, why don't uh, Why don't we not just guess, but um, if um, uh, we will record another video where we'll actually uh, do some latest power measurements on the tanks and. Uh, Call um, you to task and, and see if how accurate you were in your uh, estimates. Yeah, and I, I'd honest, honestly I'd love to see if this, uh, what I think this white increase is doing is actually true because uh, you know I can only assume without yes. checking that yes. I put all this white light on and I'm getting a lot more parts. So we'll see how much of a difference it actually makes in energy. Maybe it's the spectrum that was making the difference for growth. Mm -hmm. um, but if we see that there's just a ton of extra parts, it's probably just the energy they're getting. And once again, you've um, got uh, like a blue light and then you move things over to here. But you talk a lot about the growth that usually changes, but the color itself, do you find that uh, things change um, or shift color when you move um, in the same water, but different, I guess, um, lighting um, or um, not really? When I, I haven't put anything in this display too recently. Mm -hmm. But when I did start doing more white light, I think some of my purples and pinks got a little bit brighter. Yes. Under blue light after them being in white for uh, a couple months. But uh, I, I didn't notice a big difference on like, as an example, the, the Forest Fire Digi stayed the same, the yes. Miyagi Torch stayed the same, uh, the Pink Cadillac stayed the same, the Golden the Rainbow Loom stayed the same. Mm -hmm. It's really just these millies in the center that they look nice under mm. semi-white light, but then once we put that full white and a few months later under blue they really started to pop versus before they were kind of dull under blue light. Interesting. So that couple of hours of white uh, in this particular case, especially when it comes to acros, seems to make a difference. Yeah, and I think it kind of mimics uh, nature where you get that peak sunlight. Right. A really bright sun for a few hours and then it starts to kind of go down. But you wouldn't do it for more than, let's say, a couple of hours, per se? No. I mean, you could, but I wouldn't go to the extent that I've gone from 0% yeah. to 30%, then to 100 I mean, I would probably make it a little bit more gradual. But, you know, I'm crazy. I like to take take these weird risks and try things out. Well, like you said, um, you're, <clears throat> you're experimenting here. You've got um, lots of places to try things out. But I think, I think this is pretty awesome because uh, it's one thing when you have only one thing to play around with, but here... You actually learn and I guess you keep learning. Yeah, we get to try things and see long term how they work. I, I'm not going to just tell anybody to try things, but if, if it's something I've done in over a year or two years, it's nothing but good results. Why not start recommending it? Maybe it'll help a lot of people. I'm sure it certainly will and I know it will help me because uh, right after we shoot this video, I'm going home and I'm tinkering with uh, my tank yet again so uh, using all those little tricks that uh, and, and tips that uh, we talked about today so Dimo thanks a lot for showing us around um, I thought it was pretty educational and I'm really curious um, and want to ask my viewers what do you think um, which one uh, of uh, the items that we've covered do you agree with which ones you think we can improve upon, please write uh, in the comments below and we'll make sure to answer those questions together with Dimo. Yeah, hopefully some of the info helps and uh, color everyone corals up. Beautiful, see you next time.